What's up, everyone? I'm Mackenzie Mitchell, and welcome to Threads. Today, we are back in sunny Orlando, Florida, and we're hanging out with my best friend. She's a proud Canadian, fitness guru, professional wrestler with years of experience. She's a former WWE Women's Tag Team Champion and TNA Knockouts Champion. Shh, it's Chelsea Green. Okay, finally we're here. People have been tagging me on social media trying to get you on threads. You've known about the show since the beginning. Since the birth of I mean, threads. since the idea, yeah. creation, brainchild. Matt was the first episode and then here we are. We're finally getting to chat about your gear. It's about time. I love it, it's about time. Okay, so let's talk about the evolution of your gear from the beginning to where you are now. So originally when I was on the Indies, like my very first year, 2014, I, just needed gear. I knew I wanted to look like a quote unquote diva, but I just wanted gear that looked cute, that made me feel good. And then as I got the first few sets of gear, maybe the first two sets, I realized like, no, I really want to look like Kelly Kelly. I was going to say, I figured it would be Kelly Kelly, right? I mean, my ultimate, I love her so much. So my first, like, I think my first true set of wrestling gear was at Impact with the gauntlets, mini shorts, with a belt, and the bra top. Okay, and then it evolved into, now you're basically doing like one shoulder stuff. Why so, did you decide on that? It went from the bra top, it evolved into a, a top that I actually found on a site called Lorna Jane, okay. which is very much like the Australian Lululemon. And that was a deep V with a strap across here. Okay. I did that for a little bit. I tested it out on the indies. I brought that to NXT. And as much as I loved it and it was somewhat unique, I just like, I knew that I could dive deeper into like a really specific look for me. And when I got into wrestling, I didn't have much money when I was on the indies and I couldn't really explore the idea of different styles because I didn't have that like financial security. Sure. So I had to kind of stick to a couple of sets but I knew as I grew in wrestling, I really, really wanted my gear to be a very specific style that everyone recognized. And then I had that gear made in a hundred colors. Obviously, fast forward to 2024, that's exactly what I've done. You're constantly making new gear. Yeah. So let's talk about the creative process and the abundance of gear that you do have. I have my one sleeve now. I wear my gauntlets, my one sleeve, and usually low rise bottoms. So not much has changed ex except it's always one sleeve. But what I like to do now is, A, I like to have a whole bunch of different gear makers because they'll always make a set of gear different than somebody else will. Okay. B, I like to have fans design my gear. So a lot of times I would say 90% of my gear really? is designed by fans. Okay. Yeah. On Twitter, on Instagram, I'll get tagged. I'll screenshot it. On top of those two, you know, having different designers, have it, having different gear makers. I also like to get inspired, whether it's by a movie or me being Canadian or a bride look or color scheme, whatever it is. Sometimes I even see like girls on indies or girls back in the day in WWE and I'm like, oh my gosh, that color scheme is so cool. Like I'm not gonna copy something, but I, I will like, pay like respect to it in some way or another. Yeah, at any given moment, how many sets of gear do you have being made I at a time? Always have six gear being made at, at one time. At one time, because I will always have or two different people making three sets each, minimum. I have this like irrational thought that I'm gonna be needed for you? 100 shows Never. in one week. Never. <laughs> and I'm gonna need a new set of gear for every single show. And I, I just, I refuse to let that happen. Right now I've got, I think 18 sets upstairs that have not been worn. Like 18? Yeah, it's, I have two in my mailbox down the road. Um, <laughs> it's a problem. I, and, and it's ridiculous and it's not at all necessary, but I love it and that's, I think now what people expect from, so I like to give that to them, yeah. you know? But how long does that take? Like, is that a two week process? Or are we talking like six months? I've got my Canadian girls who whip them out in a week. They'll get me five sets, six sets in a week. Then I've got my local girls in Orlando 
who can bang things out in about three weeks. However, they are busy with a lot of other wrestlers. And then I've got like my WrestleMania or my PLE or my big event people who charge a little more, take a little more time, um, you know, maybe play with the cuts and mesh and materials a little more. And those are people that I'll, I'll save and I will only use for those big moments because I know that they're not gonna get them out quick. Of course. And sometimes for me, it is quantity over quality because I only wear them once. That's right. Because I don't know who started this for all females, but we feel like we need to wear an outfit once and then what we do, what with it? It sits in our closet. Yep. I don't know if a lot of people that are watching- And I'm the problem. Well, I'm the problem. Yeah. It's us. We're the problem, We're the problem. it's, it's us. us. <laughs> um, and I don't know if a lot of people that are watching know that we share clothing pretty yeah. much weekly. Yeah. Like on WWE television, you're wearing my boots at any time, yeah. my top, vice versa. Like we would constantly swap and then you only have to buy one. Yeah. So then I don't know why people don't do that more often. Every now and then someone on Twitter will, will know, call us out. But most of the time they don't. And I will say, it, it doesn't happen often with wrestling gear, but it happens. It definitely happens because I had a match the other day where I qualified for Money in the Bank and um, I forgot my boots. So what happened? I had to wear one of the girls in the locker room. I had to wear a size nine boot. Ooh. I'm seven and a half. Can you tell us who you had to wear? I had to wear Tiffany's white boots. <laughs> okay. Tiffany's white boots. So all I said to the girls, I sent a group text out, help, SOS, help. Everyone came running into the locker room and I'm like, I need white boots because I am very, very, very anal about my boots. My boots have to match my skirt, have to match my hat. Okay. I cannot go out there in black boots if I have a white skirt and a white hat. You will never see that. Unless there's something on my gear that combines all those colors, you will never, ever see that. So I knew going into that night I needed white boots. I forgot them in my hotel room. We did not have time. We had one match until I had to be out there and someone needed to give me their white boots. So you made it work. Size nine. You have to. Okay, somebody asked me this once about your boots because your boots lace up and they go almost over your kneecap. Yes, they're thigh highs. So is there a hidden zipper or do you have to lace them up every time you wrestle? I have to lace them up every single time I wrestle. I break a sweat lacing, lacing your boots. those boots up. Like my back hurts. It's a whole nightmare, and I wish I never saw Gail Kim wear thigh-high boots. And so that's where it started. That's where it started. I saw Gail Kim in Impact wearing those thigh-high beautiful leather boots, and I was like, that's it. That's gonna be another Chelsea thing. Like, that's right. what I always, I base my gear, my accessories off of being toyetic, which obviously comes from my husband. Right. And being unique in the sense that someone needs to be able to wear this outfit for Halloween and everyone be like, oh, that's Chelsea. Yeah. The thigh high boots, the skirt, the one sleeve, the hat, that's Chelsea. Yeah, it's gonna be recognized. Yeah. Okay, so does Matt have any influence in your gear? No. None. <laughs> Zero. Whatsoever. Zip. Zilch. Zero. Okay. Zilch. Who's saying no? Obviously, there have been some times when he has had a little input and there's definitely been a couple of crucial moments. One was my all-in gear. Okay. And that obviously to me is like one of my favorite sets because it was a half and half, half Chelsea, half hot mess. He made that set without even... You trusted him to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was before I knew better. Um, and then another one was I wore, I paid like homage to him, his old character, Zack Ryder, on the indies at Hammerstein and I wore a one pants. One leg. One leg pants. So he obviously had some input in that. And then the third one was the Ghostbusters because we were going to a Ghostbusters premiere. <laughs> right. So and I was like fishing for a Ghostbusters moment. So it worked, right? <laughs> so it worked. I mean, I actually got that gear made. Okay. Yeah. So you still had, it was still your input at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned working with Matt. What was it like when you were in WWE, he was in WWE, you were on the Indies. And then you were in WWE, he was on the Indies. And then unfortunately he got released, but then you were able to work with Matt, work with your husband finally. What was that like? Very hard. Really? You know, working with your husband, living with him, working with him, traveling with him. First of all, we're two completely different people. And then for everyone to really like 
think that just because we're married, us as wrestlers are gonna work is, that's not how it works. The chemistry was hard to build you in the ring, right? You have to build it, you know, just like, like you do with a tag partner, you have to build that chemistry. And just because we get along at home does not mean that we have the same work ethic sure. or get along in the ring. So that was really hard, but I think the basis of like, what we wanted in a partnership and what we wanted to present to each other. I think we both had that in common, which worked. And you know, of course that is again, like being toyetic, looking the part, presenting ourselves like superstars, whether we're on the Indies, in TNA, at Ring of Honor, wherever it is, NWA, we always had that in common. So that's what made us unique as a, as a pairing. Totally. And at that time you were Chelsea Green, hot mess, how was that to be able to feel that character again and be that character essentially? Well, it was hard because I was so committed to that in Impact and I was so 110% like, you know, like I, I didn't even think about acting crazy, but then acting crazy in front of your husband and trying to find the balance of like, that character wouldn't have a partner. It was really hard to like toe that line of, of figuring that out. And I think eventually we just ended up stepping away from it all together and just visually bringing the hot mess to the table when we wanted to. And he ended up coming with some hot mess gear himself and we right. did that together, which was really fun. How did you like embody the character of the hot mess? Like you essentially have a split personality in that a little bit. Like where do you, where do you find that? No, I just gave zero Okay. Zero Easy. care in the world. Like once you are just like, I couldn't look any dumber. I could not look like any more of a fool. Then like, how could you, you can't even care. Yeah. Cause like you've put everything out there. You know what I mean? Like I'll never forget. I will never forget. It was probably 2017. I had just met Matt. You and I just did that very first hot mess Little. Was it the backstage when you're sitting and I'm, and I'm going to find you and you call me like Kelsey and, and I'm Jennifer singing. and all these, yes. Which I still, I just got tagged in that the Same. other day on social media. So that was like filmed right before I met Matt. And then I met Matt and it aired and I was like, oh, oh my gosh, like what is this guy gonna think? But I, we never spoke about it. Right. I pretended at, like, I didn't even know who that person was. I went to work, I did it, I came home, I never spoke about it. And then one day, like three months into our relationship, he was like, they had watched the clip in the locker room <laughs> of me singing The Sun Will Come Out tomorrow. The Sun Will Come Out. <laughs> and Randy Orton had commented on it. And, and I guess Randy Orton was the person who pulled up the video, something like that. And like, to me, that was a big moment because well, I was obviously very Yeah, we were small fry at Impact but at that time, exactly. right? Exactly, like it was the first time that I had experienced something in Impact transcending Impact. Totally. It was always like, it was always whatever is in Impact, like the Impact fan sees it and that's it. But this was a moment where like, whoa, this this reached WWE. Totally, it made an wrestlers, impact. Wrestlers, audience. Pun intended. Exactly. 100%. So, that dress, you still own that dress? That white dress? I own the dress. Have you ever washed the dress? I've never washed the dress. Oh, I'm sure that smells. I'm sure it's like gray now. It's disgusting. It's okay. It's green. It's green, green from when I brought it to India. It's gray from dirt. It has got stains of cake. Disgusting, but I put it, I rolled it away with the shoe that I used to carry out. Remember I used to carry blue out the shoe? big blue shoe. Um, and the dress got shorter. So the dress now is like, you know, like knee high. Um, but I've got the dress and it is wrapped up and it is in a plastic bag and it, I'm telling you. Okay, so we talked about the color of this dress. Let's pull it out. This is like a bag of tricks. Okay, what are we so gonna there find? Here's are the, the shoes and I used to wear those, you know, around my wrist <laughs> and I used to swing them. Bowl. Yes, you and did. I think you probably swung them at me at one point. And if they hit you, that would probably knock you out. Okay, are we ready? I'm ready. The fact that I'm, I, it has so much spray tan. And, and it has, like champagne. Remember you're like dousing yourself in champagne. There's the green. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. There's lipstick. And there's color, like what in the this world? This was white. Oh, I know. And long, by oh, the way. Oh, it was it's so long. much worse than I thought. <laughs> Yikes. 
and it was long. The if the walls could talk, like if this, I should say, if this dress could talk, what would she say? She would say, "Wash me." Yeah, she'd say, "I need help." <laughs> she'd say, "Put me in the dumpster." The trash, garbage, immediately. Why do you think that that connected with so many fans? As a human, I designed that character. Forget thinking about wrestling. As a human, I designed that character and molded that character to everyone else's experiences. So whatever they saw in the hot mess, I tried to play into that. So, you know, I had, I was drunk and I was angry and I was jilted and I was heartbroken, all these things that we all actually feel in real life, but then I just turned it up times a thousand. Right. Was there a method to the madness of like, you were very disheveled and had mascara and eyeliner and whatever all over you, but did you have a like a specific strategic way that you were putting, you were creating the hot mess every night? Never. I literally would sit in front of my phone and I would just start plunking on as much makeup as I could possibly put on my face. And just when I thought it was enough, I was like, mm, a little more. And I'd put more on. And like, that was the beauty of it is like, I just didn't have to care. I didn't have to worry about being cool or looking cute. Like, that was the beauty of it. The worse I looked and the crazier and the more disheveled I looked, the better the character got. And fast forward, you're, you've told me that one of your favorite sets of gear is your NXT gear, right? It's just a, it's black, right? It's just all black. It is a monochromatic moment, black pleather. And I don't know what it is about this gear, but this gear makes me feel like a superhero. But honestly, there's so much to this gear because A, it makes me feel some type of way. B, it is the only set of gear that I continuously rewear. I have worn throughout every single stage of my career. Okay. Which I feel like that, which is a, a, a success in itself because we talked about how many sets of gear you actually have. Exactly. So. so this set was a set that I got made because I debated going to NXT and being like a darker character, a, a very page character, if you will. Okay. Um, I, just I could never like, see that from I know, you. and it was just a moment in time that I was like, maybe, maybe this is what NXT is missing. Maybe this is how I get on TV. So I got this gear made, but I got it made in three different tops because I didn't know how it was gonna work. I didn't know how this character was gonna look. Okay. I knew I wanted her dark. I knew I wanted her sexy. I knew I wanted her Catwoman-esque, page-like, but I wasn't sure, so I've got... And sorry, was this the debut of Chelsea Green? This was the debut of Chelsea Green in NXT and the debut of Chelsea Green on the main roster against Charlotte. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is really special. It is. It really is. Um, I've got the original Lorna Jane style top. Yep. I've got Healthy the Chelsea Green one sleeve. Okay. It is so like it's falling apart. Oh my gosh. That's you how might, much. You may have to retire that no, one. No, 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 I will never. And then I have the Bellas. This is after yes. the Bellas threw the neck. I see. And and they used to have like one pieces that went down the midsection. It was amazing. Do you think that your gear, or do you attribute memories to your gear? Like when you look at your gear, do you connect those moments? Definitely. Especially because most of my gear is only a one-time wear. That's why this one is so special to me because it might not be special to the fans watching, but to me, this has so many memories wrapped up in this gear. And that's why I just like, I can't let go. Right. This episode of Threads is sponsored by Factor Meals. With my lifestyle and busy schedule, I rarely find time to eat healthy and cook at home without the hassle. Well, that was until I discovered Factor Meals, which made my life a whole lot easier. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning. Factor Meals are ready in just two minutes. That means great meals without sacrificing my time. A total win. Plus, with their Protein Plus option, I'm finally getting the proper amount of protein I need daily. Double win. So head to factormeals.com slash threads50 and use code threads50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code threads50 at factormeals.com slash threads50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Our proud Canadian. And it, this actually still smells too. No, <laughs> like nervous. Do you not 
wash your gear? No, I don't. You so don't I, wash I'll, your gear? I only wash my gear if it's a gear that I think maybe I'll wear again. Otherwise, I want to keep the integrity of the gear. Like I said, like I get quantity over quality. Right. This is a high quality set of gear. Okay. But I I would hate to wash it and have rhinestones come off. And like, I will say though, it's giving a little bit of a nasty Didn't smell. Didn't you used to rhinestone your own gear? Yeah. Do and you I still, still do, do that? Okay. Yeah, I still do. So this set was not um, rhinestone. So pretty. She's so beautiful. I mean, she so should have. She should have won Money in the Bank, but that's okay. Right? She looked like she was gonna win and that's really what mattered. Aww. Um, yeah, I can smell it because it was like stress sweat that day. I was like nervous stress sweat, that's disgusting. Um, but I, I do rhinestone, I would say like 50 to 75% of my gear just because I enjoy it. It like is a fun moment to turn my brain off and just pluck the rhinestones totally. on. But when it comes to a big moment like Money in the Bank, like WrestleMania and things like that, there's just two, it's such a tedious job. And I would never want to, I would never want to take a shortcut. I understand. Yeah. Completely. So what did you, what did you say to the gear designer? Cause you knew it was gonna, going to be a really great moment. Yeah. Right? Like hometown girl, come not hometown, but um, yeah. coming home to your home country. Um, what did you say to her to create this set? Well, and Canada is funny because I know, I know it's not hometown, but it, it is for Canadians. Like we're, we're not like Americans where it's by state. If you're from Canada, we just claim you all of Canada. So I, I definitely knew I wanted to do, I wanted to do a Canadian moment, but I didn't really know how. And I played around with maybe doing something that Trish did back in the day for WrestleMania in Toronto, but we we couldn't decide what that looked like. So I went ahead and someone on Instagram designed this. He's amazing, does such good work. And I sent it to my more elaborate gear maker who then put his own spin on things. And then on top of wearing this, I still wanted to pay respects to Trish Stratus. So that is why I wore, instead of my regular red hat, which I do have one to match this, I wore um, a cowboy hat. Yeah. It, it gave Trish Stratus. Of course. How far in advance did you create this one? This one was made like maybe a week before Money in the Bank. One week before? Yes, because I did have other options. I had a set that I was gonna wear to WrestleMania last year in Philadelphia that I obviously wasn't on WrestleMania and I like to have things ready. So I was debating wearing that, but it just didn't feel right. Like, I think I just needed a Canadian moment. And so he made this and last it, minute. And it was accomplished. So you mentioned WrestleMania gear that you didn't wear, but this is one that you actually did wear. Tell me about the lavender set from WrestleMania. So I wish that this had a little bit more of a story to it. Okay. But I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I, it was so last minute. I had just started at WWE. I just got this made in hopes, just like fingers crossed. I got this made in hopes that I would be on WrestleMania. And I thought that was like such a far-fetched dream because I had just debuted three months prior. I, the thought for this gear was basically, what is the least worn color that I can get made that's not gonna step on anyone's toes? That is okay. literally all the thought I put into this set. That's really interesting because you've said that before to me. I'm like, what color are you wearing? You're like, well, I may wear white, I may wear pink, I, wear, yes. I may wear red, it just kind of depends. So for me, one thing I learned when I was training was through Lance Storm was like, you always want to be respectful of what your opponent is wearing. So you always want to send a text or, or call them or ask them ahead of time what they're wearing so that you don't, the biggest no-no is to get into the ring wearing the same colors. Like that's just, Aesthetically, our eyes like can't compute that those are two opponents, right? Of they course. look like a tag team. So if you show up to Royal Rumble and everyone is wearing white, and we've had that happen. Mm -hmm. We've had the year of white, we've had the year of red. We've Last had year was the year of red. Everyone yeah. in Royal Rumble wore red. I asked around if you were gonna be in WrestleMania and you're gonna wear, and usually I am the one to send a group text to the locker room and, and ask that. Um, 
Nobody said purple, so I just went ahead and I thought, okay, let me just get purple made and see what happens. And turns out I was in WrestleMania and I did not match my tag partner. Well, that, okay, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you that because I spoke to Matt about this. Um, and I've, sp I, who did I speak to? I and spoke to Matt and I have different views on what you're gonna ask me. I know what you're gonna ask me. And I spoke to John Morrison about this. Um, people that have been in tag teams of do you, should you match your tag team partner? And they all think no. Matt said no. Yeah. Uh, John Morrison said yes. He should match, but still find like individuality in it. Yes. What is your thought? My thought is absolutely. Again, you just like you can't compute that two people are opponents if they're matching. You cannot compute that two people are together if they're not matching. That's just that's just how I see it. Like, but again, I'm looking at it as a casual fan. And when I was younger, when I turned on the TV, if I saw two people that were in a tag team that looked completely different, I just couldn't get behind them. I yeah. was like, I don't get it. And I understand, I understand that, you know, we're now seeing superhero movies, Deadpool and Wolverine. Like they're not, you know, they're together and they're not. Very different. Yeah, but to me, it's just like, make it simple for the audience. Right. And that's one thing I loved about Sonia and I's pairing is that once we realized we were in a tech team, because we didn't really know that going into WrestleMania. You could tell that. You could tell it in our body language. You could tell it in our gear. You could tell it in, in the way that we interacted in the ring and in our entrance. Um, we had to figure out how we worked together and what our look was and how to make it cohesive, but, but still be her as a badass and me one sleeve and a little more like aloof. Um, and it took us a while, but you know, eventually by the time that we won the tag titles, we got there, you know? Right. How is it working with different partners and having gear that aligns? With Sonia, it was, we came up with a color scheme. I knew she wanted the base colors of hers to always be black. And you'll see that if you look back in history of Sonia Deville. So we would do black and a trim color. We would make that trim color, you know, like something just super easy, a green, a blue, a red, a yellow. Standard, staple. Stand yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. And then I would kind of do the opposite. I would do maybe a little more of that color and the trim would be black and we would kind of be cohesive in that way. Piper and I has been a lot different because we're such different people and our characters are very different and very unique. We will try our best to coordinate, coordinate but I would say that you know, most of our partnership has been me wearing whatever the heck I want and her wearing her set of gear. <laughs> and we've tried. Yeah. And like, the funny thing is, is that her and I are actually like great friends and so similar. And we have a long history together. You do have a long history. But it's just, our looks are so different. You couldn't get any more different than Diva 101 and like badass Xeno Warrior Princess. Like, eh, there's just <laughs> no meshing. We try though. Right, you make it work. Yeah. So this one does have a fun little story to it. Okay. This one, Sonia actually didn't get to try on until about three hours, two hours before we won the titles. This one is based off of Taylor Swift's Reputation album. I never knew that. Yes, so it's got the snake. By the way, can we look at these for a second? I know, they're tiny. This would fit like uh -huh. my arm. like. Charles, what? No, they're literally tiny and I love them. They're my favorite. They're yeah, so, so can, small. You can wear them. I cannot. Well, I look, could never. Here's the thing. She doesn't have a butt, so she has to get the illusion. Okay. So that's what these we are We make doing. it work. <laughs> um, the snake, if you saw Taylor Swift's bodysuit, she wears a one, one pant leg, one arm bodysuit with a snake going down it. And so that is what that is. There's the snake. I love that. Yeah. I did never know that. Yeah. So this was, you know, only like the true Swifties caught on to that one. Um, and it was fun because Taylor Swift is like so girly girl, but like the gear is really badass. And I would say that like when Derry and I put this on, it was a perfect moment to be wearing something so great because we finally felt like, okay, this is it. We, we are a perfectly united tag team and then we're winning the titles. Like it was a very like perfect moment for us. How did it feel to finally win a championship in WWE? That was your first championship to win, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in Atlanta it was, and you know, my husband was obviously there and it was, I am not a very, 
overly excited person when it comes to wrestling stuff. Like I just don't get worked up. But that was definitely a moment where um, I got home that night and I was like, shit, like I did, I did it. it. I did it and I wanted that 10 years ago. And I told all my friends I was gonna do it and it only took 10 years, but she did it. Yes, yeah, she sure did. <laughs> and I have to mention, you didn't have a hat for this one. If I could have had a hat and skirt to go with this, it would have been a little more like Cruella DeVille-ish. And, it, and honestly, it was just my hat, my skirt that like I took off immediately. And it wasn't about that in this moment. It was about this gear. And there are some sets that you'll see. I take off the hat and the skirt at the very end because it's a full look. And there are some that I'll take off right immediately as I walk out and I do my sh in that entryway. And it just depends how I feel in the moment about the set of gear that I'm wearing. You mentioned sh I know the story of why you have sh in the beginning of your entrance and why you do that. Have you ever spoke about that? Have you ever told anybody on camera publicly why you do I that? I don't think anyone's ever asked. Really? That's so crazy. Well, and it's, it's part so of your entrance. Right. It, it is like very much a, a me thing. And it's been that way since midway through impact. Not to interject here, but I remember when you were coming back to WWE um, for the second time, and you said like, how do I incorporate shh? Yeah. Like we were like going through like, how do you do the shh for the beginning of your entrance? And how does it incorporate into the music? So originally, okay, so I, I have the shh tattoo. Okay, so that's do people obviously, pick up on this? No, no, nobody, I don't think anyone even knows. I do it with this finger. I've had it since I was 17. And I got to, I got impact and I was trying to find myself. I was trying to figure out like what makes me me, what, you know, I was always emulating. That's what a lot of us do when we first get started. We emulate like the wrestlers that we love. And I, I wasn't able to find out who I was. And I was talking to Maria Canellis about this and she would always help me. Week after week, she would always help me try to figure out like who I was. And she saw the tattoo. She was like, come on, you have to have to have to use that. Like, you need to start doing it in the ring and like slapping people or something. So it started with that. It started, I would do it in the ring. I would backhand people. I would bitch slap people. And like, that was a fun little like Chelsea-ism. Right. And then when I went to NXT, that is when I was trying to figure out, again, I was trying to like really narrow in on who I was as a wrestler and Road Dog was helping me like he's like explain this sh thing explain why you need it explain explain why you want it explain why people care and he started coming up with the hand movement really and like i wish we had on camera road, road dog, dog standing at that. the top of the ramp with me because at first it was this okay and then this and i was like that's not flowing road dog like and we're trying to figure it out we're doing all these different hand movements we're doing this or all of it and he just said like, just go to live events for NXT and just like try things out. And that's how I came up with Around yep. the Block and then sh Wow. Yeah. And if you notice, you can tell when I started doing that because in my first few matches on the main roster, I don't do it. I don't do it. I just stand there at the entryway like. Awkwardly like, what I, do I do with my hands? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I don't, you know, I don't have my skirts. I don't have my hats. I'm not. I'm not like Chelsea now. I am Chelsea then that is still trying to figure out who she is. And I, I didn't do this yet. I think I probably did it in the middle of the ring and that's it. So do you feel like you finally figured out, like, cause we've talked throughout this whole time of like finding who you are as a wrestler. Do you feel like you finally settled into who you are and like knows yourself as a wrestler as Chelsea Green now? Yes, 10 years later, but like also that's ever changing because if something happens in my life or in my storyline, that's gonna change, that's gonna change everything. So it's kind of just ever evolving. And I just wanna make sure that the, the sh thing sticks, the sh thing is me. The, the gear might not be, the gear can still change, you know, the will evolve as we go, but like the sh thing is gonna be it's me. gonna stick. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned your hat and your skirt. Let's show a few or a couple that have fun special meanings behind it. Okay, so this one, this she's is- She's bent a little she's, bit. She's missing stones. She's like flopping in places, but this is one of my first hats. 
I tested it out in Impact. I had a ice blue set of gear and I wrestled our girl, Taya. Okay. Bestie. And bestie, Taya. And um, this was the first, one of the first hats that I, I tested out and I just like loved it. But why did you for the style? So the style is from Priscilla Kelly on the Indies. Okay. So when I wrestled Priscilla Kelly, who is now in NXT as Gigi, Gigi Dolan, I thought that is cool. I love that. I like, I always wanted something. I felt like, you know, we all have like the entrance pieces, but a hat so unique. The time I was just going to, so I was doing Impact and I was talking to, to WWE about going back for the second time. And I was like, I'm gonna bring this hat to WWE. Not knowing that Gigi would end up there. That within signs she would be there. So whenever someone says about this hat, like this is Alicia Fox's hat, this is Gigi's hat, it is. This is Gigi's hat. That I this Spoiler is alert. this is literally Gigi's hat. And I saw it on her and she looked amazing on the Indies and I wanted to bring it. And we did have a couple of matches um on main event, and I was like, you wear your hat. Right. It's your hat. Like I can't wear well, that. What does she say about it now? Nothing. Good for you. Do your thing. She's like a great girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and if I pretended it was my hat, that would be wrong. She brought the hat to wrestling. Yes, Alicia Fox did, but like she brought like the unique version of this hat. You would buy yes. it. And these hats are actually from um she custom makes all the hats. She's from the UK and she does like bride hat. And I said, switch the bride out and put a CG on and I'll buy every color. And you have. Oh my and my mom has found them in airports and texted Chelsea and been like, hey, I think you need this hat. Okay, well, that is exactly what happened with these hats as well. <laughs> I didn't even know that. No, nope, these are hats that, so this hat. Okay. Is one that um, Xavier Woods found in Vegas. Okay. He was <laughs> on a night out probably with the boys. And he saw the hat and he was like, Chelsea needs that hat. So I have yet to wear it because it's so, like it's such a good story. Yeah. I feel like I need an outfit that is just as yeah, good. Yeah, you have to figure out. It has a little lizard on the top too. It's got a lizard. I put the CG there, but everything else it had on it. It's got this little fun fringe, which I love. And then this girl, okay. So she is from Molly Holly. Oh. And Molly Holly is an angel living amongst us. She found this at a truck stop during a live event loop for WWE. She was on the road late night. She saw this, she picked it up, she brought it. And I actually had it and I was planning to wear this for Money in the Bank, not this past year, but the year before. Okay. At the O2 Arena in London, and I didn't get my green card on time. Oh yeah, oh my God. So we had to put a halt to, we had to put a halt to the gear, and she has been sitting, waiting for me to wear it ever since, because again, I think she deserves a moment. And the fact that like, it's very special when people find hats and like, think of me. Right. I don't care that it was, Truck, truck stop, stop or where or it came Vegas from. Vegas after 10 vodka lemonades. Like, yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? You still thought of me and you still thought like she should have these hats. Yeah. And so it's, this one in particular is really special because this is the first time anyone ever like bought, bought it me for a you. hat. Yeah. yeah. And so I've got, um, I've got a set of gear right now being made by a local Orlando girl. And um, when the time is right, she's gonna be a under the sea mermaid. Okay, since we're talking about possible scenarios, let's picture this. It's WrestleMania, you're in the main event. What are you wearing? Who's your opponent? And what does your entrance look like? Okay, so definitely me versus Natty versus Trish. Okay. Has Triple to be threat. in Canada. Okay. Has to be, has to be in Canada. And the entrance, everyone looks like Chelsea's. And I want everyone to look like versions of Chelsea, but like shapes, colors, sizes, everything. Different like version. Every version of Chelsea in the hat, in the skirt, in the gear, like all of it. Um, and everyone has to sh and um, I love your imagination here. Yeah, but I don't know what the actual gear looks like. I'm thinking it's gotta be like Uber Barbie, Uber pink, like really obnoxious pink sparkly, something like that. But you know, 
It depends what my opponents are wearing. <laughs> That's true. Because if, if I'm with Natty, she's gonna wear pink. I'm not or gonna wear whatever pink. is topical at the time. Exactly. Too. Exactly. I, I, there's, you know, there's always gonna be like something that leads me to a certain color or look or whatever, whatever it is in that year. Okay, so you've got all the pieces of your gear. Let's talk about your skirt. How did the skirt, where did the skirt come from? Um, and then how are they designed, created? Like, tell me that story with them. Again, it was a moment of, I tested a couple things out. I tried the jacket, I tried a vest. Like, I just couldn't, nothing felt really like me. Now, obviously, you know, off camera, I'm not a girly girl. Like, yes, I like to wear makeup and stuff like that, but at home, I'm like a sweatpants, like sporty spice girl. But on camera, I was so leaning into the girly girl thing and like the rich daddy's girl and all those things that I'm like, I need something super girly. What is girly? And so when I was tossing around ideas, I remembered Madison Rain, Brooke Tessmacher, and Taryn Terrell. Beautiful people. They had beautiful skirts. Beautiful skirts. Like all at different times. Um, I'm not sure who had it at first, but I remember when I was at Impact, Taryn Terrell came back and was part of the dollhouse and had the most amazing tulle skirt. So thick, so long, very like extra. And that's really what I always wanted to be, over the top, extra. And um, so I put Taryn and Brooke and I believe Madison as well in a group chat and told them like I was thinking about wearing a skirt, paying homage to them, like how would they feel? And they were obviously, they're so sweet. Like they're, the three of them have been nothing but kind to me. And so they kind of gave me the green light and I went ahead and I, I tried it and I totally fell in love with it. It just, there's something that entrance pieces do that make you feel whole. You kind of are going out there like naked in spandex. And so that entrance piece like really gives you a sense of self and comfort. And that's what the skirt did for me, the skirt and the hat. It's like nothing, but it's everything to me. And again, it's toyetic and it's something that people can, they can dress up as me for Halloween. They can wear the skirt and wear the hat and it's simple. It's your larger than life piece as a superstar. And you know? now I have action figures with a skirt. Yeah, how crazy is that to have your action figures? Like, I know Matt obviously collects action figures and all the toys and whatever, and we've talked about being toyetic. Um, but is that kind of like surreal for you? Is that a weird thing to be like, oh my gosh, I have tons of action figures with things I'm wearing, et cetera, et cetera. It's weird, but I think it'll be weirder to me when I see myself in the store. I've never, I've never seen my action figures. I just saw you last week at Walmart. I've never. I should have bought it and brought it to you. Well, I mean, you've got plenty, but. but every time someone sends me a picture of like them seeing, like, I think it was um, Indy Hartwell and, and Johnny saw me in the store the other day and sent me a picture. I'm like, what? Let's talk about Saudi Arabia. You love going to Saudi Arabia. Um, it's always a fashion show. And I always am interested to see what you're going to pull out and wear. Um, you have your traditional look of your gear, but what was like creating gear for Saudi? Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. I I love Saudi Arabia so much. Like if I could just keep going back there over and over again, I say it to the people who host us all the time. Like, please bring me back because the food is good. The people are amazing. It just like, it's like America, but bigger okay, and crazier. It's amazing. Um, so when I knew I was gonna have a match for the first time in Saudi Arabia, that was a big deal for me because that is, so much more surface area to design, which I think is so fun. So I asked one of the people on Instagram, like, hey, would you be up for designing some Saudi Arabia gear? I want it to match these boots. So I had some boots made. They were designed by Steve the Shoe Man in Australia. He does all my boots now, he's amazing. And he gets me my boots in like two weeks. Um, wow. He designed specific boots for me. They had some teal, they had some silver, they had really cool straps, like just a little bit different than I had normally gone with. So I, I reverse engineered. Normally I do gear and then boots, but this was, I, I need you to match this gear to these boots. And I just had a couple of things I needed them, I needed out of this set of gear. I needed it to have the appearance of one sleeve still. Like I didn't want to just totally disregard the gear I've been wearing for the past couple of years. 
Um, and then of course it needed to match up the boots. So he came up with something, we tweaked it a little. I wanted the midsection to look a little like more cinched to have some designs. He made one of the sleeves one color so it gave the appearance of one sleeve. And then honestly, that was it. I loved it. I sent it to a new gear maker who had never made me anything like that um, in the UK. She made it in like two and a half days, got it back to me on like the third or fourth day and I went straight to Saudi Arabia and I I don't believe I tried it on until I was in Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. I ha it was like a, this has to fit because I don't have, have no any other, other options. options. I'm, you know, otherwise I'm going to Amazon, I'm getting gold and I'm looking like C-3PO or whoever the Star Wars man is, okay? Or, right, I love that we don't know Whoever that. those- We don't know that R2 reference. D2 Can we whatever call our husbands? Because our husbands would yeah. know that information. Yeah, so um, that was it. Okay. It was that or nothing. And I mean, I will say there's something about everyone going to Saudi Arabia and having like this really unique oh, one pieces. Oh, it's so cool. And it's funny because it puts everyone on the same level because we're all covered the same way, but everyone's uniqueness shows in the way they design their gear. That's what I really loved about it. And, you know, people can say what they want to say about us, you know, dressing culturally appropriate for Saudi Arabia, but in the locker room, we love it. Yeah. Like we have so much fun designing that gear and, and all wearing the same shape and look, but being unique to who we are. We, everyone was just like, they all feel like superheroes. Yeah, and you look it at the same time. Yes, it's really special. I'm interested to see what you say about this question. AEW, Ring of Honor, TNA, WWE, besides yourself, whose gear do you love right now? I really like the gear that is influenced by Japanese wrestling. Okay. I love, it's not for me, but I love seeing it on other people. I love, um, so Japanese gears, a lot of different fabrics, a lot of different textures, and a lot of different straps. It's really over the top. Like Asuka. Asuka, you'll see it a lot in Kyrie. EO has, EO's a little bit more Americanized now, but you'll still see it. You'll see, like if you look really hard, she's got so many different kinds of fabrics. Um, so anyone who kind of has a little bit of, of Japanese inspiration to their gear, I really, really like. Okay. Um, but besides that, honestly, I love my own gear. Well, I knew you were. I mean, that's why <laughs> I said besides you, Chels. Besides you. Besides me, there's no other besides <laughs> Um <laughs> Hey, well, Chels, thanks. Thanks for chatting. Yay. Thanks for having me. We, we did it. We're on camera.